happy Wednesday. It is a blustery cold day. A lot colder than I was expecting it to be. So, I was also not expecting snow today. And it's definitely almost a blizzard outside. So, I am cuddled up next to the fireplace because that's where it's warmest right now. With my hot tea in hand. Hope you all are enjoying today as much as possible. And... Today, our topic this week, we're doing this normally, we do these on Thursdays, but we're going to do it Wednesday today because tomorrow's Christmas Eve and let's be honest, you all should be with family or friends or not here watching me. I'm going to be with my family. So, whole cooking is today's topic. Now this is actually very important for no matter what stage of life you're in, whether you are a new mom whether you are pregnant and going to be a mom soon, actually you already are a mom, but whether you're done with the childbearing years, whether you're not, that's not even on your radar yet, whole food is important. Most of the foods in the American diet today are highly processed and I'm, that's going to be way too loud. Um, most of the diet the American food diet today is highly processed. Those processed foods are actually lacking in a lot of the micronutrients. So you've got macro, which is your big ones, your fat, your calories, carbs, big category, right? Micro is a lot of your enzymes, your vitamins, your minerals. Those things in processed foods are lacking. They don't exist, they've been denatured, they're, they're just not there anymore. So whole food cooking is becoming a more popular thing and a lot of people think whole food cooking, oh my goodness, there's no way I could do that. Like that's completely insane, totally crazy, it's not possible, like I need my easy buttons, right? Been there. We live on a farm, we do a lot of custom stuff, we have our own acreage to take care of and two little kids like I don't enjoy cooking either so I cook to feed my family and that's pretty much it so what is whole cooking whole cooking is taking the whole ingredients ingredients that are as close to nature as possible so instead of um, instant potatoes you're taking the actual potato instead of quick rice you're getting actual rice not already cooked dehydrated back down just add water you're gonna actually have to take a little bit more time it's well worth a rice cooker or if you have an instapot it's also a rice cooker already it means cooking without preservatives so most of the food today that is processed has some kind of preservative in it and a lot of these come in your dressings, your hamburger helper. Sorry, that's no longer an option if you're cooking with whole food. But don't worry, I will give you easy tips. Believe me, I've picked up a few. Um, what else? I lost my train of thought here. Sorry. Oh. Vegetables. Keep them fresh if you can. Obviously, we can't grow food around year round. We're in Nebraska. If we had a greenhouse, maybe, but even then, it's pretty hard to get some things to grow in a greenhouse in Nebraska. I do a lot of frozen fruit, frozen fruits and vegetables. Uh, my kids like those. We don't like canned vegetables. I don't like the way they are mushy. Also, when you can them, um, we do can our green beans but when you can them you denature a lot of the proteins because they have to be canned at such long temperatures at such high temperatures to kill off any bacteria that's in them so it's kind of a give and take we do can our beans the rest of it is honestly just froze because we don't like it otherwise so if i'm going to start this whole cooking journey how am i going to do it what do i need to know right it's kind of important Stay away from the processed food. Stay away from the bo boxed foods. Any dyes, like all that stuff. Best tip, 
keep ingredients on hand. As that boxed food hamburger helper runs out, don't buy more. That was a transition stage I had to go through. Like, as it ran out, I just didn't buy more. Because if it's there, I'm going to use it. If it's not there, I can't use it. Right? So keep ingredients on hand that are easy and ready to use. Um, I keep frozen vegetables on hand all the time. I... <laughs> I cooked... Um, or I keep fresh vegetables all the time in the fridge during the summertime because they're easy to find. Potatoes. Get a potato bin. Rice is another easy one to keep on hand. Dried beans is a really good one. If you get into the canned beans, yes, they're easier, but when you start looking at the labels, they're loaded with extra things. Um, with dry beans, you do have to pay attention. You do have to think ahead, which is, I'm still in the process of learning this or remembering to do this, is you have to put them there and they have to soak for a very long time before you can actually use them. Hence the, um, canned beans tend to be more convenient, but a lot of them have the preservatives in them. They have dyes in them as well. So if you're going to buy the canned, check them very carefully. Your favorite herbs, um, oil, like some sort of cooking oil. Um, I tend to prefer olive oil just because it's, again, less processed. Dehydrated fruits. We have fresh fruits, we have dehydrated fruits in our house. Uh, what else? Eggs is another big one. Eggs are usually fairly cheap, they're easy to keep on hand. A lot of people this past year have started backyard flocks. So I'm sure if your neighbor has chickens, they probably might be have extra eggs. Be worth at least, you know, checking to see. It is well worth buying a deep freeze. Um, or several freezers if you have the space. Especially on the meat department. So meat tends to be the most expensive part of any diet, right? That's no joke, protein is expensive. It's also your most nutrient-packed food is your protein. Carbs are cheap. Carbs are also mostly filler. They have a little bit of nutrient, but honestly not a whole lot. So, if you're going to buy meat, check your labels. If you can buy local, do it. If you can find somebody who will sell you a quarter, half, whole, whatever you have freezer space for, do it. It is cheaper than when you're buying by the pound. I've always grown up buying sides, so that's what I was used to. When I went to college, I was shocked by how expensive meat was. I went, holy crap, I have a heart attack here. No wonder people don't eat meat all the time. Because it is expensive. But, again, it's your most nutrient-packed food. Get in touch with a local farmer. If you need help finding one, I know people all over the country. I can probably hook you up with somebody who will have an extra side. So buy local if possible. And here's the other reason behind that, especially with our meat. So during this past year, during this pandemic, um, a bill was passed through allowing food processors. It was slipped through kind of one of those silent with other things that allowed food processors to add ingredients to your food without changing the label. This is a huge issue if you have food allergies. And this is also part of why we went away from a lot of fluff food and extra and box food because I can't trust the label. Unless it is labeled gluten-free, I could not look at that label anymore and trust that that didn't actually have flour in it. But this also includes your meat. So in your meat, a lot of that ground beef, it can have, especially ground beef actually, it could have dyes, it can have, because to keep it that pretty red color everybody wants, it could have soy protein, it could have fake meat added into it, and it's all mixed together and sold as ground beef. Check with local producers. Find your meat locally if you can. 
yes it is a bit of a sticker shock if you are not used to it right up front but remember that so a half lasts my family six months we're a family of four we eat a lot of meat we don't eat a lot of carbs we eat a lot of meat that half will last us six months So factor that in as you're budgeting and figuring out how to, how much meat you need and to plan for. And then do the math yourself. How much can you buy it for at wherever your grocery store is? Also, when you're buying half quarter, you get a lot of variety. You get your steaks, which wind up being really cheap. You get your roast, which would be really cheap, and your burger. It's a trade-off, like everything in the world. Third tip, third or fourth, I don't remember which one I'm on. Meal planning is essential. I'm guilty of like, I'm gonna meal plan, I'm gonna do this great menu, and then either A, I don't follow it, or B, I don't actually plan it. I'm going to link to a blog at the bottom of this video in the description. You'll have two of my go-to, oh crap, we stayed out too long and everybody's like hangry, meals. They're easy, they're simple, they're whole food quick and easy to do. They're both very versatile, so you can adjust them to your family's needs, too. Um, so yeah, meal plan is essential. Another thing you can do, sit down, it's a good Sunday afternoon activity, sit down, plan out what you're going to eat the week, and then as you're cooking, say I need carrots Monday, Wednesday, I'm going to cook on Monday, and I'm going to cut carrots up for all week. And then I'm going to just store those carrots I didn't use in water back in the fridge. Or if I have extra time one night, maybe I'll get everything cut up for the next meal. Or so on and so forth. I also like to cook once a day if possible. So I will cook an extra big meal on like supper. Is usually the one because I can guarantee we're probably gonna be home everybody's gonna actually be around the table right so I'll actually cook for supper and then lunch breakfast is usually some sort of eggs lunch is actually just a remake of something leftovers I might mix a few more things into it in the skillet I might just rewarm it in the skillet but lunch is honestly usually just leftovers remade so there's another quick tip if you really don't have any time to cook or just don't like cooking like I do so those are your four tips at the end, at the beginning of mid-January, I think is when we're going to actually do it. We're actually going to launch a five day, a week long really, whole food cooking challenge. I will give you the meals. I will give you one meal a day to cook. I will give you your shopping list beforehand. And we are going to set it up where I'll post the meal probably the night before so you can food prep or the day before so you can food prep, get ready for it, and then come back and comment on your varieties. That is going to be happening in the Empowered Women group, the Empowered Healing Women group, also linked in the description. Join that group, join the Whole Food Challenge, and we will see you later.